any place around the world, even if you're living far away from reefs, they matter to you. And we have to come together to protect and restore them because really our lives depend on it and it would be something quite tragic to see such an incredible ecosystem disappear on our watch. Coral Vita is a mission-driven social enterprise that grows corals to restore our world's dying reefs. And my co-founder and I launched Coral Vita really from the back porch of our house in grad school. After about eight or nine months, we got our first investor on board, and slowly our second, third, and we were able to raise our pre-seed round. We teamed up with leading coral scientists around the world who pioneered these methods to grow corals faster and make them stronger. They came on board as our original advisors. And ultimately we settled on here, Grand Bahama, for our first coral farm. It's essential for anyone doing this kind of work to integrate local communities as much as possible. These aren't the reefs I grew up alongside or depend upon. So we're very proud of the fact that more than half of our staff and growing is Bahamian. Born, bred, raised a Bahamian. As a Bahamian, uh, the reef is like a second grocery store. And throughout the years, I've witnessed our reef decline, where it's through climate change, overfishing. You can see how detrimental these things are in an ecosystem. These are our underwater rainforest, basically. You may be wondering yourself, what is a coral? And a lot of people think that corals are colorful rocks. In fact, they are animals that have plants living inside of them that make rock for their skeleton. They're a pretty epic three for one. And then these corals grow and grow and they form reefs, which in turn provide the habitat for so much life in the sea. What we're seeing right now though is that they are dying. Half the world's coral reefs are dead and over 90% are on track to die by 2050. There's a range of things that threaten coral reef health, habitat destruction, overfishing, pollution, but more importantly than anything else, and we're seeing this right now, is the climate crisis. Warming and acidifying oceans are killing corals in front of our eyes. The best thing to do for coral reefs is to stop killing them, which requires our leaders to act on climate destabilization and habitat destruction. But while we continue waiting for that action, we need new solutions to keep reefs alive amidst the threats that they face. Coral farming is a process that's pretty, at the end of the day, simple when it comes to how this actually works. A lot of our focus is on going out and collecting pieces of coral from out on the reefs, but we also really try to prioritize what are known as corals of opportunity. So living pieces of coral, that maybe have broken off because of a storm. Once we collect the corals, we bring them back to the farm and put them in our tanks. So we use two main processes to grow the corals. Microfragmenting and assisted evolution, both pioneered by our original advisors, Dr. David Vaughn and Dr. Ruth Gates. The process of microfragmenting, you take one piece of coral, and if you cut up the coral into these tiny little microfragments and you place them near each other, it triggers a natural healing process. These corals will actually fuse back into themselves almost like scar tissue, so that we can grow some of these important slower growing species in months or years instead of decades and centuries. At the same time, the land-based system gives us advantages such as being able to control the conditions in our tanks. So basically, we can give corals the spa treatment or we can take them to the gym. We can make the conditions just the way they like it for health or for growth, or we can, say, raise the temperatures, bring them back down, stress harden the corals, mimic projections for future ocean conditions so that the corals growing in our tanks can better survive oceans of the future. And this is an element of this field known as assisted evolution. Once we've grown the corals in the tanks, we then go out to pre-selected and surveyed reef sites and plant those corals into them. And the corals then attach to the reef and will grow over. Sometimes overnight, you can see changes. So with these efforts, we look to help preserve reefs for the future as we then hopefully see our leaders step up to stop killing them and protect them to begin with. One of the innovations we brought to the table through Coral Vita is this mission-driven commercial model. So rather than simply relying on grants and donations, we're actually looking at the incredible benefits that reefs provide as a driving force to get stakeholders to pay to restore and protect them. So we have a few core pillars to our business model, selling restoration as a service, ecotourism, conservation finance, and adopt a coral. There's a number of interesting mechanisms that are coming online to fund projects like ours. There are reef insurance policies being developed because they protect coastlines from storms. Blue bonds and foreign debt being forgiven in exchange for the money being spent on conservation. A lot of people know about carbon credits. Biodiversity credits are becoming a thing. So all of these offer opportunities to help fund restoration work. But our ultimate vision is that there are large-scale land-based coral farms in every nation with reefs around the world. In 2021, we were honored to be awarded the inaugural Revive Our Oceans Earthshot Prize. This is a prize created 
to help fund and inspire solutions for the threats that we all face. Winning the prize came with a million pounds, which was quite remarkable and is gonna help us scale and innovate even more effectively. But really, I think what's most important about it is there's an inspiration factor that we all, as we learn, can create solutions to solve these challenges that we shouldn't just give in to doom and gloom. I often describe myself as an optimistic realist. There are things each one of us can do to take care of coral reefs and take care of the planet that in turn takes care of us. Vote with your wallet and vote at the ballot box for leaders that are actually stepping up and doing their job and solving for the climate crisis and habitat destruction. We also can eat more responsibly, advocate for marine protected areas, adopt corals or come visit these places and put your money into the communities that really rely on healthy ecosystems and often are at the front line of the climate crisis. But ultimately, I think it's important for us to realize that while we do have the power and should take the responsibility to make changes ourselves, the onus really is upon a select handful of governments and industries and financial players who have the power and are not stepping up to solve for these problems. We should not feel that it's simply individual choices that are responsible for the crisis we're in because they're frankly not. That being said, we hope that folks will have the opportunity to advocate on behalf of coral reefs and even come down and plant corals with us one day soon and together we can collectively take care of these ecosystems.